today will be the zebra. And before you, we have a wonderful picture of a pair of zebra. So I would like to begin with the etymology of the word zebra. And by etymology, I refer to the origin of the word zebra, the term zebra as a word in itself. So the word zebra is derived from a Latin word in the 1600s, which was equiferous, which refers to a wild horse. Equiferous is a collection of two different terms, equus and ferrous. Yes, so the term equiferous entered Portuguese as a zebra or zebra, which was originally a mysterious or possibly feral equine, but equine I mean a horse like mammal in the Iberian Peninsula, which is basically on the southwestern corner of Eurasia. Well, in ancient times as well, the Greeks referred to the zebra as hippotigris, which translates to horse tiger. And the term hippotigris is currently used as a subgenus to classify African equids that have black and white stripes. So there we have a small graph. Yes. So the equus genus. The equus genus is a genus for single hooved mammals. By single hooved mammals, I am talking about the donkeys, horses, zebras, and the like. The, the genus equus is the only recognized extant genus. By extant, I mean with a live species consisting of seven different species. And they are split into three different subgenuses. The first subgenus would be Hippotigris, which has the zebras. And zebras are split into three species. We have the zebra, plain zebra, and gravy zebra. Another subgenus would be Asinus, which has the wild asses. And we have the Kiang, the Onaga, or sometimes called the Asiatic wild ass, and the African wild ass. Donkeys fall under the African wild ass, domesticated or not. Then we have the third genus, which is ferrous, which consists of the horses. There is one species of horse, but split into two subspecies, another equus ferrous cabalus and equus ferrous brezwalski. So before you, we have a map of the distribution of zebras within Africa. And as you can see from the map, zebras stretch all the way from Eastern Africa, moving along the Eastern coast of Africa, all the way down to South Africa and Namibia, Angola and the like, into Botswana and whatnot. And within Africa, we have three species of zebra, gravy zebra, mountain zebra, and the plain zebra. So, Hello. Okay, I'm back. So I'll, I'm going to go through each particular species of zebra in, my, in the discussion as well. So what you see before you is the gravy zebra, easily identified by its narrow black stripes and very prominent white belly. As you go on, you're going to see the particular differences, physical differences with the zebras. So the gravy zebra is the largest of the zebra species, and it's also the largest in the equus genus. It weighs about 350, 450 kilograms, making it the biggest in the entire genus. It is considered most threatened because according to the, I think the last, one of the last IUCN, counts and whatnot, there were about 2,000 species, like individuals currently alive. They can they also have very 
prominent large ears in comparison to other zebras, very large bodies, and they stand out quite differently because we have very thin, narrow black stripes along the body with a, with a very white belly. So Gravy Zebra was named after Jules Gravy, who was a president of France. It was a president of the 1800s. And the Gravy Zebras are native to Kenya and Ethiopia. So when you do travel to Africa, you will most likely find the gravies in only Kenya and Ethiopia. So my next zebra would be the mountain zebra. So the picture you see before you is that of the mountain zebra. The mountain zebra also, like the gravy zebra, has thin, narrow stripes along the body, but the stripes broaden as you get to the hind legs and also has a white belly as well. But it is shorter and smaller than the gravy zebra. It is shorter and smaller than the gravy zebra. So the mountain zebra is split into two subspecies. We have Cape So look at the picture. At the supposed neck, you find a sort of sag. That sag is what we refer to as the jula. The mountain zebra is native to southwestern Angola. Namibia and South Africa. So it acquired the name because it was called the mountain zebra because of its preferred habitat. So it basically stays within highland areas like the mountainous terrain, especially escarpment to the diversity of grass species. Plain zebra. This is the, the picture you see before you is a plain zebra taken from Lake Mburo National Park within Uganda. So unlike other zebras, the plain zebra has broad stripes throughout the body and they do reach the belly, which is not common with the other two species of zebras we were going through. So plain zebra, or referred to as Ecospaga, so Formerly, they were referred to as Bruchel's zebra. So if you have any literature concerning equids or mammals within Africa dating back to the 1990s, it will most likely be referred to as Bruchel's zebra. But along with further classification down the road, was reclassified as the plain zebra because the Bruchel's zebra qualifies as a subspecies of the plains zebra. It is also the most widespread species of zebra within the African continent because they go up as far as South Sudan, stretching all the way down to South Africa. So they have quite a wide range. They are more dependent on water, unlike the other zebras. So they tend to stay in areas with easy accessibility to water. And they are called plains zebras because their preferred habitat is along the plains. Yes, they're also the most subdivided species of zebra we have, containing six different subspecies. And before you, we have a list of those particular subspecies. We have one, the mainless zebra, the Grant zebra, Chapman zebra, Crochet zebra, Bruchel zebra, and the Quagga. But you should note that the quagga is currently extinct. And the picture you have to your right is a picture of the quagga taken from a London zoo before they were extinct. It was sometimes referred to as a half horse, half zebra, basically because it looked like a zebra all the way from its head to its shoulders, then looked like a horse from its shoulders all the way to its backside because it was brown from the shoulders all the way to the hind is brown with prominent white socks. But the quagga is currently extinct due to excessive hunting in South Africa. They were located in South Africa along the Orange River. So the other five are the only extant subspecies we have of the plain zebra. 
and the mainness, it's, it's you should know that the mainness of Iraq reaches the farthest north. It's the farthest north subspecies of the plains of Iraq. So it, it's the one you can find in northern Uganda, South Sudan, and most likely in Kenya as well. So this is the distribution of the plain zebra in Uganda. So if you look at the northeastern side of Uganda, where you have Kidepo Valley National Park falling within that area, P and Upe Wildlife Reserve also falls within the same area. And the zebra you would find in that area would be the mainless zebra, or you would call it Equus agaborensis. Then if you come down to the southwestern parts of Uganda, you will have Katonga Wildlife Reserve and Lake Mburu. And the zebra you'd find in this area would be the Grand Zebra, another subspecies of the plain zebra. Zebras in Uganda, yes. Like I'd said before, we have the Grand Zebra in Lake Mburu National Park and Katonga Wildlife Reserve. Then we have the mainless zebra in Kidepo Valley National Park and Pian Upe Wildlife Reserve. Lake Mburu and Katonga Wildlife Reserve are in the southern part of the country. Then Kidepo Valley National Park and Pinopo Wildlife Reserve are in the northeastern side of the country. So the pictures before you are that of the Grand Zebra, the one you'd find in Lake Mburu and Katonga Wildlife Reserve. So I would like to briefly discuss the particular features you can see on the Grand Zebra. So if you look at the picture to your left, that zebra is looking straight towards you. For those who have seen a horse, it has more of a face like that of a horse. In comparison to the main list, but I want to look at these particular features first, then you compare them to that of the main list that you can pick out these particular differences. Mm, yes. If you look at the main, a full mature main stretching, going all the way from the top all the way down to the back, the mantle, no prominent shadow stripes. And by shadow stripes, I mean those incomplete black stripes you'd find on the white stripe, if I should say. When I show you the picture of the mainless, you will actually see it. Okay, and here we have the mainless zebra. So if you look at the picture to your left, the zebra has sort of semi incomplete black lines on the white stripe those qualify as shadow stripes, which is evident in the uh, mainless zebra, uh, brushels and a couple of others down the road. Now, what makes the mainless zebra different is by the name, the mainless zebra. That is because the mane reduces or declines as the zebra gets older. So the picture on the left would be considered an older zebra to those on the right. The one on the bottom right is older than that to the left. Then if you look at the one at the top right with a pia pia on its back, has almost no mane at all. And that is how you could tell the mane zebras apart from the grand zebras in Uganda. But you could also look at the head shapes. Uh, if you look at the photo to the right bottom, the zebra, in that picture has a distinctively large head in comparison to the other zebras. And if you look at it from the front, it looks more or less like a donkey as opposed to a horse, because most of the other zebras tend to look like horses, but the main zebra looks more like a donkey. So yes, I would like to run through some facts about the zebra. We have a beautiful zebra in front of us. That's the Grant's zebra. As you can see, the horse-like structure of the face. So it's key to note that zebras are native to Africa. They were originally from Africa, but currently you can find them in zoos across the world. So zebras are extirpated in Burundi and Lesotho. By extirpated, I mean they are no longer within said areas. They could be considered extinct to that area. So I use extirpated as it's a better term. So a group of zebras can refer to as a dazzle, a herd, or a zeal. 
and some zebras form harems. And by harem, I would mean a single male zebra, a stallion with a variety of different females. So it's one male with different females. And this is common in the plains and the mountain zebras because the gravy zebras are more of communal zebras. They don't really form harems. So males are called stallions and the females are called mares. The gestation varies from 11 to 13 months, depending on the species of zebra, as the grave is usually tends to take about 13. And then we have the mountain ranging between 11 and 12. So the young of a zebra is called a fowl. Then a young male is called a colt, which is similar with the terms used for horses as well. So the average lifespan of a zebra is about 25 years, though there are records of some living up to 29 in captivity. So yes, there are a lot of debates about this, but zebras are black with white stripes, not white with black stripes, though in most species of zebras, you will find the white being a more dominant color, but zebras are black with white stripes. And the black and white helps them regulate temperature as well because the black stripes absorb the heat and the white stripes reflect the heat as well. So unlike other equids or members of the equus genus or in the equus family, zebras are almost impossible to domesticate. The horses have been domesticated, uh, donkeys have been domesticated, but it's almost impossible to domesticate zebras as they are extremely feral. Zebras have been recorded to reach a speed of about 65 kilometers per hour, which is relatively quite fast and helps them run away from prey and whatnot. So zebras bite and kick when attacking or defending themselves. As we go on, I have a picture showing that particular incident of zebras fighting, which might bring more life to the meaning of the words. And zebras sleep standing, zebras can sleep standing up, which is commonly known to be something that the giraffes can do. But yes, it's also common amongst the zebras. Then the zebra is also part of the coat of arms for Botswana. I'm going to explain that in the next slide. So in the coat of arms for Botswana, we have two zebras, a shield, an elephant tusk, sorghum, and the term pula with a blue band. So yes, the zebra in the coat of arms for Botswana is the Chapman zebra. So there are different theories as to why the zebra was chosen and I'm going to go through all of them. One is uh, the zebra is considered to be politically neutral as it's not a totem for any of the tribes within the country. That way there'll be no arguments and fights over amongst the people. Then it is also said that uh, the zebra was chosen because it is graceful and gentle, which portrays the character and behavior of the citizens of Botswana or what they should aspire to be in their general lives. Then another theory was because the black and white stripes of the zebra represent equality of all the people, all colors within the country. Yes, and the coat of arms was adapted in 1966, which is also the same year Botswana acquired her independence. Yes, now the picture there, you can see zebras biting and you can see prominent shadow stripes as well. And yes, now threats of the zebras fights between stallions, just like the picture portrays they could seriously get damaged and serious injuries could be fatal down the road. Interspecies breeding, which is common amongst the subspecies of the plain zebra because they are closely related. And it's risky because if said subspecies do interbreed, you could end up losing the entire subspecies. Then there's habitat loss, usually caused by human development and urban settlements where prime habitat for zebras is destroyed so people can create settlements or industries and whatnot. Then we have a couple of predators as well, like the lions, leopards, cheetahs once in a while, hyenas and wild dogs. And the image you have 
before you are lions enjoying a wonderful dinner of a zebra. We have a pride of lions enjoying a beautiful zebra. And that is all I had for you for my wonderful presentation about the zebra. If you do have more information or questions, please do contact us on guys at virginuganda.com. Thank you very much. I'd like to hand over back to Herbert, our host for the evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, thank you very much, Mark, for this uh, fantastic presentation. Uh, this is the beginning of the series of the presentations. I will be sharing these similar presentations every Saturday or every Sunday morning in Uganda and Saturday in Canada and North America, South America. It will be Sunday afternoon in the Asia and Australia. So the next Saturday we will be having uh, Davis Rukundo uh, with the discussion on the East African primates. Same time, uh, same hour. Thank you very much and see you next time. For any questions, please, you can send them to us on the email, uh, guides at baduganda.com or visit our website, www.baduganda.com. Thank you very, very much. I wish you a happy Easter. Bye-bye.